In this video, we're going to learn how you can create third-party integrations with Trello using their webhook system. I'm going to start by explaining what webhooks are and how they work. We're going to move on to creating a webhook using the Trello API. And finally, we're going to test the webhook using a tool called webhook.site. And now if you're not familiar with webhooks, webhooks is a system or it's a it's kind of a design, I don't want to call it a framework, I'd say pattern where if an event happens in one system, you can configure what's called a webhook to send uh, an HTTP or send a message. I guess it's generally over HTTP that would go to another system to basically notify the second system of any kind of changes that might happen in the first system. Um, an exact, actually, a real world example of something that I built using Trello webhooks is I built an integration between Trello and Todoist. Uh, Todoist is just a regular checkbox, you know, task app. So. A lot simpler than Trello, but believe it or not, their phone app is a little a little more responsive to me and it's easier to knock things out. So I was testing out uh, potentially how, if I could sync these two systems together, um, just uh, just how well my workflow would be. I like, to, I like to tinker with my systems and try and see how I can make things operate faster. Um, but that's an idea of how webhooks could work. Now, one of the cool websites that I recommend for testing webhooks is webhook.site. It's webhook or webhooks.site. Yeah, webhook.site. So what this application will do, completely free, don't have to pay for it. You don't have to create an account. You basically just go to webhook.site and it's gonna spit out this page here, right? And it gives you a unique URL. And the whole purpose of this site is to um, receive like HTTP requests. So all it does is accept information to it and it will then say like, you know, it'll demo, it'll show it on screen. So what we're gonna actually do using the Trello API, there is no UI around uh, the Trello webhooks, you have to do it through the API, is we're gonna register a webhook to our board and then we're gonna make some changes and see some of the data come in here. Uh, so, okay, we got a webhook.site. Let's go ahead and set up a, a webhook itself. Um, let's head back over to Postman. I'm gonna duplicate this tab because that makes things a little bit easier. Uh, we're going to change cards to the webhooks endpoint. Uh, the key and token can stay the same. Uh, now there are two required fields here. Uh, it's not ID list and name, so let's get rid of these guys here. And then actually, if you didn't know this inside of Postman, you can cheat instead of having to type out your stuff up here, you can actually put your query parameters in the params tab here, which makes things a little bit easier to work with. Uh, so the two fields that are required are callback URL, which is basically the endpoint that Trello is gonna send its updates to. And then the other required field is the ID model. Now, the reason it's called ID model is because if we go back into one of, into the X, the JSON of the card, I guess we'll say, let's, let's head over to the first card, just like we did before. Uh, we'll export as JSON just so we can see that data. You can see in here, we have ID board, ID list, um, the, the specific keys here, they kind of, or the IDs, the unique identifiers look very similar to each other. Um, and the ID model can actually accept any one of these. So like, if you wanted to like subscribe to changes on a, on a single card, you would pass in this ID. And then any changes done to this card would then send the, that callback uh, to our webhook endpoint, the thing that we've set up to receive thing, to receive information from Trello. Uh, same thing with the board, same thing with the list. We're gonna pick the board. Uh, let me make this actually zoom this in a little bit. The reason we're gonna pick the board is because any changes made on the board, which include lists and cards inside and even checklists inside of cards, uh, Trello will send updates for that. All right, so let's grab the ID of our board here and back out and go back to Trello. And it's huge now, zoom that out a little bit. And now we have our, this is the URL working on. So inside of ID model, I'm gonna go ahead and paste that. So that's there. And now the callback URL, like I said, that's where we want it to send data to. So we're gonna grab this unique URL here. Now, one thing I learned the hard way um, when I was you know, basically setting up for this is you'll notice that up here, the URL is almost identical. The only change is this little hash bang in there and that won't work. Like webhook.site, that, that, that doesn't register the right way. So you need to grab the one from here uh, without that hash bang in there. Okay, so let's grab that guy hands on the right keys on the keyboard and go callback URL got an extra space over there so I'm gonna delete that out and these are again these are our four parameters that we need here it's a, it's a post so let's go ahead and send this 
And you can see you have, we get the same thing, it's a response with some just information about the webhook. Now, one thing to know about Trello webhooks um, is if it if you if it has more than 500, I think 500 is the number of consecutive failures. Basically, if your if your endpoint goes down, it'll automatically deactivate it. And you'll need to know the ID. It's a, it's a good idea if you really build a lot of webhooks to grab the ID because I don't believe offhand there is a way to get these IDs to list your webhooks out. So you want to make sure that you're going to note this down if you're going to keep working with this. Um, but you know, for what it's worth, we don't really need to, so I'm not going to worry about that. All right, so back in Trello, let's go ahead and make a change to this thing. I'm going to take one of my cards and we're just going to move it across the column. Say this is my test card. Uh, let's move it to doing, right? Now you've, you see, it's, it's kind of small, it's probably small in the stream, but in the actual header up here, you can see I have a one next to my webhook.site, and that's because um, I actually got a payload sent back. Now, if you notice, there's actually two payloads here. One is head and one is post. The reason we get a head is because this is what Trello will use when you register a webhook to basically make sure the endpoint is live and active and responding to something. But post, if I pull this up, same thing, I'll zoom in so we get a little more we can see a little more stuff like this is all the information that comes along with the just that simple action of moving from one column to another uh, Trello is going to take all this information about the card and just send it and you can even find out um, inside here it'll tell you what kind of change it did uh, yeah I think here right uh, trend not translation key there was another way I did this yeah here we go so under this action endpoint here, you can see we have a type of update card because we updated the actual list it was on. You can see where the list was before. You can see where the list was after. Um, yeah, so again, there's a lot of information about this. So what I basically did when I was building my integration between Todoist is I did it specifically on the checklist within a card, uh, which as a brief demonstration of that, if you come inside of here, you can create checklists and then you can add uh, task one, task two, task three. And what I did is I built an integration to, to do it. So the, the kind of the model of it is my projects were designed as cards. And then I had different types of tasks that I'd want to uh, accomplish for these projects underneath here. And then basically as as I would make changes to my lists, the, those changes using only webhooks would sync across to Todoist and vice versa too. So if I checked off a task in Todoist, it would also use their webhook system to send something to my Netlify app. Netlify? Netlify? I don't know. Uh, send it up to my Netlify app and, you know, that was where I wrote all my logic built, you know, all serverless functions using Node.js to basically determine once I get that payload, what do I do with this thing? There's no simple way around that. Um, so you still have to write the code to make the decisions on what you want to do with this data. However, if, you've, if you're familiar with using services like, like IFT, I-F-T-T-T, -T -T, if this and that, uh, Microsoft Flow is like that, Zapier, all those applications are is they're a pretty wrapper around stuff like this, where Zapier will register themselves as a webhook and say, okay, when something, makes, when something changes on this board, I want to receive data. And then, you know, in, as part of your workflow, your Zap or whatever they're called in there, um, any changes, you know, Zapier is going to have that central logic to say like, hey, if a card's checked or if a list is checked here, let's check it off in, in Todoist. Um, but uh, A, I'm cheap and B, I like the learning experience. So I built something like that myself and it was pretty fun. If you like this video, feel free to give it a like and share it out to your friends. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel for new videos every week. If you're looking for help on an issue or just want to collaborate with other developers, be sure to join my Discord by clicking the fullstack.chat link in the description below or just enter it into your browser to join. Thank you so much and have a great day.